Hi everyone, I'm Lexi Sun, a master's student in data science at the University of San Francisco. For my practicum, I'm working with the neuroscientist Ashishi Raj and senior biomedical engineer Xi He Xie from the Brain Networks Lab at UCSF. Also, Jeanette is my mentor at USF. I'll be talking to you today about this project, an LSTM architecture for multiple disease diagnosis and prognosis from brain image data. Talking about the motivation, as we all know, the correlations between structural connectivity and functional patterns of neural activity in the human brain is of fundamental interest in computational neuroscience. Our purpose is to develop an LSTM architecture to extract information from multiple channel brain MEG data. Magnetoencephalography, also MEG, is a functional neural imaging technique which enables a non invasive mapping of the brain activity. Similarly, the brain function manifested in neural oscillations can be measured non invasively using MEG and reconstructed across whole brain networks. So based on this idea, we developed this architecture to analyze the MEG spectra, extract quantitative information, make predictions on the brain functional parameters of interest. So these results make it possible to characterize neurological diseases such as autism spectrum disorder, Alzheimer's disease, Huntington's disease, also to make early diagnosis and prognosis. Here, I'm going to talk a little bit more about data. The data is of 36 adult objects, which has about 32,000 spectral per object. Each spectrum has a shape of 86 by 40, which stands for 86 brain regions and 40 frequency bands. For a MEG spectrum, we want to find a bunch of parameters that could describe the spectrum. Here are the parameters we selected. First of all, we have the patient ID, which is very important for measuring the generalization ability of our model. Also, we have the speed, which represents the cortical cortical fiber conduction speed. Also, tau E and tau I. This uh, represents the delays in neural responses of excitatory and inhibitory neurons. Also, the alpha, which is the dynamics of long-range efference as well as a global or graph time constant. Also, the tau c, a global coupling constant that controls the relative weight given to long-range efference compared to local signals. Here is the model pipeline. As shown in the picture, our architecture is made up of several sequential parts including source signal preprocessing, MCMC simulation, and LSTM modeling. So all the images were recorded at a sample frequency of 1200 Hz. The signal preprocessing includes downsampled signals from 1200 Hz to 600 Hz, then filtering noisy artifacts outside a certain bandpass range, after that, we apply source localization to infer the neuronal activity that generated the observed signal. This divided the original signals into 68 cortical regions and 18 subcortical regions. Now we have the original dataset for training the models, which have a shape of 86 by 40. However, since we don't have much data, we apply the Markov chain Monte Carlo method to simulate from the original dataset to get more samples for training. Then we pass the data to the LSTM RNN model and get the final results. Here, I want to talk a little bit more about the neural network model, basically why we choose LSTM. So based on a moment-to-moment -moment perspective, our brain is collecting dynamic, multidimensional information and process and produce rich behaviors. So the most important thing here is the behavior are context-dependent. This makes LSTM a perfect match for this problem. Here comes the results. For the patient ID, we have an accuracy of 0.16. Here is a plot of the true value and predict value of the parameters, also the R square values. As we can see in the plots, the model has a really good performance on structural connectome related parameters. 
The parameter tau e here has a R square of 0.71. It represents the delays in neural responses of excitatory neurons. Also, the alpha, uh, which represents a global coupling constant that controls the relative weights given to a long range reference compared to the local signal, it has a R square score of 0.79. Also, the parameter speed, which describes the cortical cortical fiber conduction speed, has a R square score of 0.997. So, to improve the model performance, we are thinking about increasing the model complexity, also using bidirectional LSTM. Finally, we want to make this architecture a pre trained model with applications of like new data sets and characterizing more diseases. What I talked about today was how to use MEG data to make diagnosis and prognosis. And I gave you an architecture including signal preprocessing, MCMC simulation, and LSTM modeling. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.